hi guys welcome back to my channel and i'm back with another recap can you believe it season six is finally here so we got tyler perry sisters season six episode one straight no chaser let's get into it Woo! so as i already know last season it ended with you know maurice and q getting into a confrontation at the airport in the parking lot and then all you hear was a pop, pop, gun go off. So, during this struggle, come to find out, Q got shot in his, his shoulder, right? It's this part I don't understand, but whatever. He got shot in his shoulder. And he's laying on the ground as if, you know, he got shot, like, where his rib cage is, like, underneath his, his breastbone. Like, he's like, I'm dying. But mind you, the wound is like right here, right here. But anyways, he's lying on the floor like he's dying. And then as soon as the shot goes off, Calvin was like, thank, good, thank goodness I followed you. And you know Maurice, his slick mouth, he's like still bumping his gums in like a laughing matter. But that's not a laughing matter, but... He don't care because of all the stuff that you put him through. So it's like kind of like he get what he asked for type of situation. So Maurice wants to flee the scene. And Calvin was like, listen, we need to just call the ambulance and the police, you know, so that way we can let them know what's happening. Maurice was like, I don't care about that. Like, I'm about to leave. And he talked about he don't want to go back to jail. But if he leave, that's like he going back to jail. Because it's like, why would you leave the scene of the crime? If you know what happened, stand in your truth. But... Anyways, uh, Calvin convinced Maurice to stay there until the ambulance and the police arrived. When the police arrived, Maurice was still being his snarky, um, snarky ways with the mouth. I'm like, they should have just, you know, put him in contempt and just put him in the back of the squad car so he could calm down. But you know how he is. He don't care if it's like. He don't got like the care of the world, so he's just just talking out his neck, out his neck, and my and Calvin is trying to calm him down. Whatever he don't care. And then the cops, the officer was like, "Listen, um, what's what happened? How this happened? Like, well, we got into altercation, and Calvin also like, listen, there's cameras everywhere, so that could basically, you know, see right like what had really happened. So." He, the officer was just did to do his job, just trying to, to see and get the backstory of what happened based on what they said, opposed to what the cameras might catch it, whatever. So after that, even after the officer said they can go, Maurice is still, you know, talking on the side of his neck or whatever. Long story short, ambulance came, took Q, um, come to find out he's all right. He got a pulse and um, they let Maurice and Calvin go. So that was that. Next, moving along. We got Miss Danny. Well, before we get to Miss, wait, Miss Danny, we got Zach and Tima. So, you know, they're having their own little intimate moment at the house and they're talking and whatnot after doing the do. Um, Zach was like to Fatima, how can you be so calm? And she's like, what do you mean calm? You know, with my whole baby mama drama here, she was like, oh, I'm not calm and got off of him and sat down next to him and started talking to him. I was like, listen, listen, I'm not cool about that. But, you know, that was like way before I came into the picture. So, like, basically, what can I do? And, you know, kind of like just to see where his, um, their heads is at. And, you know, with, with that, you have to have grace. So, with that being said, Zach was like, so since you have grace and all that, Please do not let nobody else come up to this house saying that you they um baby mom you they um baby mama cause I can't do it and the same the same way Fatima was like she couldn't do it with the Karen and Heather situation but you know I commend it because not most females will be in Fatima's situation in real life they're like oh you got another kid on the way deuces same thing with a man. Deuces, you on your own with that, okay? You made your bed, not lie in it by yourself. That's the type of time they on nowadays. But, you know, I commend both Zach and Fatima for, you know, sticking it out the way that it did. Because, you know, it could have been the other way around. Like, literally, had it been Fatima in that situation and Zach was Fatima, 
Yeah, it could have been, it would have went left. They wouldn't even be where they at now if the roles were reversed. But anyways, um, come to find out, Zach wanted to know how many men she slept with. She was just kind of hesitant on the fence, like, mm. Then he was like, yeah, I already knew it was a lot. And then, you know, oh, <laughs> she was like, she brought him something about the baby mamas, but he was still trying to, you know, get it in with her, whatever, again. And, yeah, so eventually she came around and said seven and she said honestly you know i was in long-term relationships and this is how stuff went down and then after that he was like, okay he rolled over as if he was going to sleep or whatever and then she was asking him how many women has he been with and he was just like uh, i'm tired start sucking stuff <laughs> and like listen then she rolled over to him and was like listen i understand you know that was in your past but you know just so you know you already know how I rock and roll. Like, just, just know. And he was like, yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. So that was that. Hopefully, you know, they had a good night's rest or whatever. But anyway, moving along to Miss Danny. She's down at Billy Jake's, you know, having drinks after drinks after drinks. Um, Next thing you know, Preston pulls up and was like, listen. Hey. And she was like, what, you got, like, a tracker on me? He was like, no, we're just having dinner. We. Oh, so she's here. And he asked, Preston asked Danny, do she want to meet her, meet her? And she was like, nah, I'm good. And he was like, fine, whatever, Danny. And then he gets up and leaves. So now the the bartender is like, and she's, Danny's asking her for another drink. And she was like, nah, give me my key, give me your keys. And then I gave you another drink. And Danny was like, that's a fair trade. Like, we could do it all on together. I give you the keys. You give me the drink. And come to find out, Tina's her name. Tina was like, give me the keys. Next thing you know, Danny gives Tina her keys. She puts them under the counter. And then she pours uh, Danny a drink. And then she steps off and goes to her phone from after drying glasses. And she calls Andy. Andy le and she lets Andy know that Danny's had the, um, at the at Billy Jake's drunk and you know Andy says she'll be on her way to pick her up next you know Andy calls Sabrina tells her about Danny they're like okay well I'm away then it could she calls Karen Karen was like yeah I'm away but she was on her way to the salon like yeah so next you know they all pull up at the at Billy Jake's talking to her and whatnot and yeah, they see her like, listen, we wasn't, they basically tell her like, listen, we wasn't trying to condemn you. We all got our own situation and stuff that was going on. And they told her about how, how Gary's like, he's, he's there, but she's trying to like slowly move her way away, move her way away from him and stuff like that. And that was that, but she realized that the sex is good. So she, so it's going to take her a little bit of time because, you know, he do what he do to her. And that just makes her feel great. Sabrina tells her about Calvin. And she's like, listen, at this point, I don't really care what y'all two got going on. I'm about to drink this coffee because they also gave her coffee to sober up. So, yeah. But she's like, I'm going to drink this coffee for that. But then Sabrina told her about that. And that was cool. And then next year, you know, Danny was like, Miss, Miss, um, Miss Karen, Miss Motherhood, what's your spiel? Like, what you got going on? And then she told her about. Well, she mostly told all of them about the whole Aaron situation. I'm surprised she didn't tell him that his name was once John, but whatever. She told him about that, and then mm, that was that. So next thing you know, um, Danny, as they were getting ready to leave, she turns around. She sees Preston and, Min and Mindy sitting at the table, so she decides to get up and go walk over there to them. And the other three girls are still back at the bar. Um, Karen was like, she got to go because she got to go check on the salon. And she'll talk to them later, and hopefully they get home safe. So now you got Sabrina and Andy still at the bar, and they're going to help her. So next you know, Danny walks over to the table where Preston and Mindy is. She sits down, and she starts talking to them. Basically, Preston, he he was not seeing this all the way through. Like, he was not seeing this all the way through. So come to find out, Preston gave Mindy the ring that he was supposed to give Danny in the first place. And come to find out Mindy was okay with, you know, because it's a lot of stuff that they got to sort through between Preston and Danny. It's like the love right there that he has for her is not lost. 
And it's like Danny's too stubborn and stuck in her ways to like let this man come in and love her like the way she want to be loved because she's so used to be the past relationship. And plus with that whole situation with um the dude, I forgot his name, that's that fast, but whatever. Him with the hitting on her and stuff that she's kind of like on the fence with everything. So that's all this traumatic trauma just coming her way. And it's just like she do not know how to deal, mind you, she's drunk upon drunk right now at this table trying to talk or whatever so yeah Preston said he was going to take Minnie to the hotel so that he could come by and check on Danny Danny was just running in her mouth and she's so so drunk that she don't even know what she's saying how to tell eventually Sabrina and Andy go to the table to pick her up and take her home so now Preston has to sort this whole thing out to see if he really want to marry Danny or do he just want to try to make it work with Mindy? But I hope and pray that he works works it out with Danny because you can tell he really want to be with Danny, Danny instead of M M Mindy. Like, make it make sense. Like, you can see it in his eyes that he'd rather be with her. But, you know, he got the next second option. Like, yeah, whatever, whatever. So moving right along, Karen, while she's driving home, she is texting Pam Mind you, Pam is in a in in a <laughs> intimate situation. I don't know if she was actually still at the salon or she was at home. But my bad. She said she was at home and she was getting it in. And she asked Pam to send her some pictures of her turning everything off at the salon. But at that same time, Pam was like, "I'm gonna do it next." You know, she get a call from Aaron. Aaron pulls up at front of her house and he's calling her to check where she's at and she was like listen i'm on my way to the salon but i could come back to you know talk to you for a few minutes so she gets to her house he's standing outside and she was like you can tell she got an attitude she's got that stand up attitude every female knows when you mad at your, your man you got that attitude and it's just like ugh, why you even hear the look of you the sound of you is making me uh but whatever i'm gonna see what you got to say so she get out the car talking to and she talks to um aaron aaron was like can i come in to talk she was like no you could, and what was that whole situation with y'all earlier? She was, he was like, listen, do you want to talk about that here? And he was like, she was like, yeah. So he's trying to break it down, whatever. Then she's like, nah, forget that. I'm good. I'm tired. I'm about to go home and go to sleep. And eventually she was like, you can just leave. And he leaves. And then she was about to go back into her house. And then she calls Pam and Pam was like, I'm sending them right now. She was like, I told you to send that like a few, a, a while ago. So Pam does send her the pictures. Next, you know, Karen was looking at the pictures. She knows the one of the pictures that one of the curler lights is still on. And Pam was like, I thought that was the cooling off, um, the cooling off button. Nope. She should have, Karen should have stuck with her intuition and not for nothing. I know Danny's her friend and all, but she should have just went to the salon that when she said she was going to instead of making those two detours, because I think she would probably be able to save the salon. Yeah. So Karen pulls up to the salon. You can see like there's smoke behind the glass. She tries to open the, the door, but her keys fall. She, she gets it back, picks it back up, opens the door, goes inside. And then she just sees, she's like, oh my God, oh my gosh. So she runs into her office, trying to get the fire extinguisher, but she's having problems doing that. Not for nothing. As a pregnant woman, you is not supposed to go towards where that fire, but I understand she's trying to help. That's her first baby. But yeah, so... She tries to do the fire extinguisher. It don't work. She throws it down. She's so coughing all the fumes and smoke. Next, you know, she passes out inside the salon while the salon is slowly engulfing in flames. Pam, 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 Pam. You better hope and pray. Karen lets you back in on the strength of having grace because, boy... That was such a careless mistake, like, such a careless mistake. You worried about getting your, your rocks off with some guy. You're not worried about your work establishment first because your work comes before pleasure, like business before pleasure. But you're trying to mix pleasure with business, and that ain't going to work. And clearly, look what it got you, a burnt down workplace. Yeah, 
that was a lot to unpack for this first episode, but I'm glad we here with it, baby. Season six. Let's go. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. And y'all tune in to BET every Wednesday at 9 o'clock for Sisters. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Yeah, we're about to see what the aftermath is next. So with that being said, bye.